What's up guys, welcome to Tech Savvy Buyers. So today I'm going to be comparing the Nintendo Switch Lite, which just launched yesterday, to a PS Vita. Is this device finally capable of taking down the seven year old PS Vita and putting it in its place? Let's find out. So welcome back. Now many of you long-term followers of this channel know that I pretty much adore the PS Vita and pretty much any device that I have compared this to still kind of falls short with what is actually capable from the PS Vita compared to some of these newer devices. We've already compared it against the original Nintendo Switch and we've also compared it against a JXD S192K. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link it up here. You guys can go and check that out. It was an ultimate showdown and it was a pretty interesting video. Nonetheless, you guys might actually enjoy it. So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna look at some of the gaming capabilities. We're gonna see what other unique features each device possess. Um, despite the different ages of them and ultimately at the same price point relatively considering that this is no longer being produced officially by Sony and you can pretty much only find secondhand ones given that the price is close to around 200 bucks for this and of course this is for $200 as well so if you have $200 burning a hole in your pocket or your wallet which console should you spend it on or which handheld should I say should you spend it on should it be the new Nintendo Switch Lite or should it be the PS Vita? So like I mentioned, what we're gonna start off by looking at are some of the games, the different capabilities of each one, battery life on each guy, and overall what I personally think uh, in terms of portability and usability of each device and we'll come down to a conclusion and we'll figure it out from there. So I'll leave links in the description below for you guys to pick up any one of these devices if you so choose to get one. This is the Aqua Blue PS Vita and this is the Turquoise Blue Switch Lite. Now in terms of gaming, this is compatible with all of the original Nintendo Switch games that have already come out and the games that are coming out with the exception of games that require you to use only either tabletop mode or dock mode or if they're using some kind of motion controls only. So for example, 1-2 Switch popular game that came out with the launch of the original Switch may not be a game that's going to work on this device. However, a lot of the games that are coming out for the Nintendo Switch do support portable mode because they find that a lot of people do tend to take the original Switch portably basically. And if you look at it, honestly guys, without diving too much into it, I honestly think that this is way more portable than the original Nintendo Switch. It's just smaller, sleeker, easier to carry and lighter as well. And the battery life gives you about the same that you would get out of this one as well as the resolution of the screen is technically the same also. So with that being said, how do the gaming actually stack up on this? Now in my testing, I played a couple of different games. Mario Kart 8, I tested Fire Emblem, I tested Bayonetta, and I also tested Lego's Ninja Go movie, just to kind of see how good the performance is on this device. Needless to say, just like with its predecessor, the Switch Lite actually packs a pretty heavy punch in the gaming arena. It's pretty smooth. There's no real lag that's noticeable from the system itself, if, unless it's built into the actual game. Now with that being said, the only limitation that you have with the Switch Lite at this point is that it really can only play Nintendo Switch games. If you do have an account with Nintendo and you want to log into your online account, then you can start accessing some of the Super Nintendo games and Nintendo Classic games on this device like you would on a normal Nintendo Switch. That's a pretty good feature that you do have that backwards compatibility somewhat by accessing it online so that you can take those games with you on the go. Now, aside from that, there really isn't much else you can do in terms of gaming. That is pretty much where it gets limited. However, the franchises that you get on Nintendo are just something that Sony will never have. So you're not going to be playing uh, Mario or Donkey Kong or Zelda or any of those type of titles that typically you see on Nintendo and only Nintendo or even Pokemon for that matter, which is a big fan favorite. You're not going to be able to play that on the PS Vita. So in terms of gaming, I'd say it does carry its weight and it does make up for the price that Nintendo is asking for, for 200 bucks. You don't have to spend an extra hundred dollars and go with the original Switch so that you can just get access to some of those latest games like the latest Donkey Kong or the latest Mario that's about to come out. Even Super Smash Brothers for that matter. So how does the PS Vita stack up when it comes to gaming? This, by far, is arguably one of the best handheld devices you can use to do any kind of gaming today. Not only can you play native PS Vita games on here, but you can also play PSP games, you can play some PS2 games that have been ported to Vita, so technically they're Vita games, but they're remasters, such as a God of War 2 or God of War 1, and a couple other big titles, Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank. A lot of these titles were remade for the PS Vita because they were such a hit on the PS2, and they look just as well and run just as smooth as they originally did on the PlayStation 2. So you have access to a big library of PS Vita, games that are pretty much still I would say they're making a few more games here and there um, if you're a huge JRPG fan and you like RPG style games this is by far the best device you can get I would say stop watching the video go pick up a PS Vita if you like RPGs switch is not gonna cut it if you're that type of gamer 
Aside from that, like I mentioned, you have PSP games that you can play on here. You can play PlayStation 1 games on here. And now that the PS Vita is pretty much at the end of its life cycle and Sony has stopped production, this thing has been hacked and cracked to death at this point. In fact, if any of you guys want to go ahead and see some of those tutorials, click on this card up here and it can take you to a tutorial on how to go ahead and hack your Vita. However, with that being out of the way, once you have a device that is hacked, you can do so much more with a PS Vita than you can ever dream of doing with a Nintendo Switch Lite. That doesn't just include playing a whole list of games that you may get from different sources, but it also means that you'll have access to some of those old school games. This can become hands down one of the best emulation stations that you can get. Now comparing this to the original Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch also was hacked up to a certain point, the original models that came out, and it was pretty much a similar contender to the PS Vita in that retrospect. Switch Lite, however, being only one day old has not been issued a custom firmware yet or any type of stuff what we don't know what's going to happen with that but to say at the minimum that is something that's on the PSV and it's very abundant in addition to that, if all of that stuff isn't enough for you, the other cool thing that you can do with a PS Vita is that you can actually tap into your PlayStation 4, do it remote play like that, and play some of the latest games that are out on console on your Vita on the go, whether it's over the internet if you're not even home, or whether you're locally connected. Make sure you just have your PS4 plugged in via LAN cable and not Wi-Fi to get the best optimal experience. Also, if you are running a custom firmware, you'll be pleased to know that you can also play PC games through to your Vita. You can actually stream PC games over to your Vita using the Moonlight app. Now, again, this is a lot of stuff that comes with the Vita once you actually go ahead and modify it. And the reason I'm including that in this comparison is because today, but chances are you most likely already have one that's been modified or you have one that is capable of being modified and it's free, easy to do, no risk of breaking, nothing like that. And it just opens up a plethora of different things you can do with this device. So of course, when it comes to emulating games, you can play Nintendo games, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Dream cast I mean the list just goes on with what you can do with the PS Vita. Now let's move on to some of the things on connectivity and media playback and some of those little nitbit features that you used to get a lot back in the old days which still are present with the PS Vita. However the Nintendo Switch Lite just like its predecessor the original Switch didn't seem to include some of those things. So let's talk about one big one Bluetooth compatibility and Bluetooth connectivity. With the original Switch you had to use a Bluetooth dongle such as a Gully Kit one which I reviewed. Put a card up here for that too if you guys want to watch that video. But that is a little kit that you get that attaches to to the USB-C port of the bottom of the switch and it allows you to connect any headphones wirelessly over Bluetooth to the switch. Now the same can be said about the Nintendo Switch Lite. There still isn't any native built-in Bluetooth. In fact, because the Joy-Cons are not detachable, there's absolutely no Bluetooth in this device as, at all. So for the price point, what you're getting inside a lack of a Bluetooth feature is kind of a nuance. In addition to that, there's no internet browser even if you have good Wi-Fi connection. So even though this can support up to a five gigs connection of Wi-Fi, which is hands down much better than the Vita can support, you can't really do much with it except updates and stream some of those old school games like I mentioned from the Nintendo Switch Classic or sorry, the Nintendo Classic or the Super Nintendo and games like that call it backwards compatibility. So you're not gonna be really doing any online browsing like I mentioned, you're not gonna be using YouTube on here, you're not gonna be doing a ton of stuff that you could really easily do with a PS Vita, which is kind of unfortunate considering this is a device from 2019 and this is a device from 2012. So seven years later, Nintendo still hasn't fixed some of the glaring issues that they should have included with this day one. Um, and it's also interesting to see that the Nintendo 3DS XL at least came with a built-in browser, but they didn't decide to bring that back in this. So at 200 bucks, you're getting a device that doesn't have Bluetooth. Now heading over to the PS Vita, of course, you can connect any Bluetooth headphones you want to this with a decent range. That may not be the latest Bluetooth technology, but at least it still works, even though it is old. You also have a built-in web browser, so you can use that if you're on the go. Check your mail, check whatever it is that you want on the Explorer. And also you have an app for YouTube, so you can watch this video right on your Vita if you would like. Now, if that's not enough for connectivity, guys, there's pretty much other options that you can do with this. You can locally store videos and pictures if you want to view those as well or share those with somebody. So if you do have a movie that you downloaded or you have something saved, a digital copy of something, you can transfer it over to the Vita, watch it while you're on an airplane or while you're anywhere basically. So it not only allows you to have a true handheld gaming console, but it's also a handheld portable media station. So if you're not using your cell phone to do that, the PS Vita will take care of that easily for you. However, the same cannot be said about the Nintendo Switch Lite, unfortunately. Now, how does battery life stand between the two? I'm happy to say that the battery life between both devices are pretty much the same. So the battery life on the Switch is six hours. Roughly, this is about how much time that I've been getting so far in my one day of testing. I've run this completely through, played it all night, and I was able to get about 
five hours and 30 minutes to be exact, or five hours and 32 minutes to be exact with medium brightness settings and absolutely no volume. I had my headphone plugged in the entire time. Now with the Vita, long time in playing this device, easily gives you six hours, even at full brightness, even at full gameplay. However, if you are using different types of hacks on it, such as using the overclock feature that you can do and boost this up to 500 megahertz, then you're gonna vary, your mileage will vary at that point pretty much. You're not gonna get the same battery life that you would typically with a non-rooted or non-hacked device. So with that being said, I'd still say that the battery life is very comparable between the two if you're running you know, a hacked version or a non-hacked version without using an overclock hack to it and they'll give you pretty much similar battery life so i think that's a good thing to keep in mind if you are planning on traveling for long periods of time or you don't have a power bank that you can take with you now in terms of charging them on the go both of these devices have a plethora of different battery options that you can get with it like this comes with a nyco grip that you can attach and give you extended battery and then you can buy a bunch of different power banks that's clip right onto the nintendo switch i believe they were available for the switch so i'm sure they'll be coming out for the switch Lite as well i don't see a reason why they wouldn't make something like that now the last thing that I wanted to share with you guys is the display resolution and the overall size of the display. And guys, there really isn't a debate over here. Clearly, the Nintendo Switch Lite has the much better display at 720p native resolution compared to 500p resolution, which is kind of a weird resolution anyways, but still looks great on the PS Vita, but the Nintendo Switch outshines the Vita by all means when it comes to resolution, brightness, clarity, and color palette. So overall, you're getting a much better image quality on this device than you are on the PS Vita. Now, it doesn't mean that the Vita doesn't have a decent quality screen. So as you can see, even for a device that's seven years old, this thing stands out pretty well. And of course, this one is the slim model, guys. So I'm not showing you the original fat one, which has an OLED screen, which frankly is better than the LCD screen that's included in the Nintendo Switch Lite. So if you have the fat one, that one is gonna be better than the LCD screen that's included on the PS Vita. Now let's look at memory inside. I know the resolution I said was the last feature, but there is a couple of things that I wanted to share. Memory and memory expandability because that's key if you're gonna be adding a lot of games to it. Guys, this one's a pretty easy one as well and also just depends on your configuration. The Nintendo Switch Lite comes with 32 gigs of built-in storage, which means you're gonna have a limited amount of space that you can add games into. However, with that being said, once you fill that up, you can easily expand it with the access of a micro SD card slot on the back, which I believe can support up to a 256 gig card capacity. So with that being said, you have a ton of storage options for the Switch. So if you're planning on building your library and really having a ton of games or downloading a ton of stuff on this, you can easily do that with the Switch Lite's capability. Now moving over to the PS Vita, if you have the Slim, you only have one gigabyte of built-in memory, which is really, really sad, and pretty much all you're going to be using that for is, say, game saves and stuff like that. You're not going to be doing any type of media or downloading and installing games on it by any means. However, they do have their proprietary PS Vita memory card. Now guys, that has been probably one of the biggest features that made this device get retired and put out of its misery in that point. The PS Vita memory cards are insanely expensive and sometimes just getting a 64 gig card will cost you as much as the Vita itself if you go and pick one up from some of these places like Amazon, eBay, or GameStop if they still carry them. So if you can find one, chances are you're gonna find it super expensive and it's not gonna be worth doing it. Now with that being said, if you are running custom firmware, there are new things that are available that can allow you to use a micro SD card, such as an SD to Vita adapter, like I have here. This little adapter will allow you to put a micro SD card in your PS Vita and store your games on there as well. That way you have no boundaries to how much you can store. And as well, it can also support up to a 256 gigabyte SSD card with no trouble at all. So depending on what you have going on, the Switch Lite may be the better option when it comes to storage and adding more games to your library or the PS Vita may actually have that as well. So pretty much guys, that is all I have to compare about this in terms of speakers, volumes, all that kind of jazz. I'm not really gonna go into too much detail. Both the device do amplify with a loud amount of volume. I think the Switch Lite does get a bit louder than the PS Vita, but then again, with Bluetooth, I can connect to a Bluetooth speaker, not something I can do with the Switch Lite. So looking at both of these devices, which one is the winner? And honestly, guys, I really like how the Switch feels. I really, really do. I really love the screen. I love the tactileness of the buttons. I love that it's new, it's fresh. It's got a whole bunch of games that are coming out for it and that you can still play. All the Mario franchises, stuff that you can't do with the Vita. I actually like the turquoise blue color as well. Although on camera it's showing a little bit more of a sky or robin blue, it's actually got a greenish hue to it that really my camera's not picking up all that well. 
But with that being said, guys, I still got to hand it to the PS Vita. And some of you guys may call me a Vita fanboy or a PS fanboy. And you know what? That's fine, honestly. The amount of pleasure I get out of using this device is just not going to be tapped by any handheld that's out there today. No other handheld, whether it's an Android device, whether it is anything pretty much, is going to outshine the Vita. Simply because of the amount of stuff that I can do with it. And the fact that I can play my PS4 on the go if I want to with this. The fact that it gives me pretty much access to anything that I want to do. So playing older PS2 games, playing some nice PS Vita games that are full title games, guys. They're full length catalog games. They're not like Game Boy games where they're just, you know, tiny little time filling games. These games are actually full length games that take up a good amount of time to complete and offer a lot of replay value too, depending on what kind of person you are and what kind of game it is. So overall, I'd say guys, for me, the big winner is the PS Vita. That doesn't mean that the Switch Lite is not a heavy contender. Honestly, I think the Switch Lite did a better job at competing with the Vita than the original Nintendo. And frankly, once this does get custom firmware, I may change my opinion altogether. Once custom firmware starts to roll out for the Switch Lite and we can see the capability of it, it may be better than the PS Vita altogether. Who knows? Let's see what the hacking community actually puts out for the Switch Lite and if it becomes something, you guys know I'll be all over it. If something does come out, I'm gonna make sure I modify this for you guys and send it over. So ultimately, again, for me, PS Vita is the winner. Now for you, it may vary, right? It, it may just come down to game library. That's why certain people will pick an Xbox over a PlayStation or a Nintendo over the other two. It just depends on what kind of games you want. Obviously, if you're a Pokemon, Mario, Donkey Kong, or a Zelda fan, then the Vita is not something that you're gonna be buying, and it's not something that makes sense for you to buy because those games are not gonna be the types of games that you would look for. Doesn't mean there aren't similar games on that platform. It's just not gonna be the same like what you're looking for. So to each their own. So ultimately guys, for me, the Vita is the winner. Let me know which one is better in your opinion. I'm dying to know what you guys think is better. Is the PS Vita still the king of handheld consoles or is the Switch Lite now the new king of handheld consoles? Let me know in the comment section below and I will be engaging with you guys. We'll have a little healthy debate, it'll be fun. And of course guys, if you're new to this channel, do smash that subscribe button because you'll be up to date with all the new videos and content I'm putting out. And while you're here, leave a like, why not? Anyways guys, till the next video, I will see you guys on my next one. See you later.